Yeah, so when you take artificial sweeteners, um, you're getting that signal, that sweetness. And sometimes that's going to raise insulin. Certain ones like aspartame used to do it a lot, but some other newer ones actually don't do it that much. But the problem is that that sweetness is going to tell your body, hey, you know, we're going to eat. So then you get hungry. So it's like, okay, so on the one hand, there's no calories coming in. But on the other hand, your body is getting ready to eat. And so therefore, your insulin is going to go up, you're going to, again, lock away the, um, the, the, the fat stores, because, you know, that, that signal is telling your body food's going to come in, I'm going to start storing calories, as opposed to burning calories, right? Yeah. Your body is either storing it, or it's burning it, there's no other in between. So it's, it gets ready to start storing calories, because that's what you've just told it to do. And therefore, if your insulin's still going up, then your body's not able to use those calories. And then you're going to want to eat because you're going to be hungry. And that's going to lead you to do a lot worse. And, and you know, you think about it, like you just have to use some common sense. Like how many people have ever told you that, hey, I just switched to Diet Coke, lost 25 pounds. It's like, no, I don't think I've ever heard that ever. Uh, what you do hear a lot of is, hey, I was drinking like 20 Diet Pepsis a day. As soon as I got off that junk, I lost 25 pounds right? Because there's all that chemical that was keeping you sort of in that sort of feeding mode, as opposed to that fasting mode, right? So say you take 100 calories of cookies versus 100 calories, an egg, for example, the minute you put those in your mouth, the hormonal response to those two foods is completely and utterly different. And that's not in dispute. We know that certain foods are going to spike insulin, the cookies are going to spike insulin like crazy, the egg is not going to. Yeah. So what's going to happen? So you spike insulin, your body takes that 100 calories, and it takes a super high insulin and says, Oh, I need to put all this into fat, because it's a storage form. So I take these 100 calories of cookies, I store it into fat, well, there's no energy for your rest of your body. So it's going to you're going to want to continue to eat, because you need energy for the rest of your body. If you take that egg, insulin doesn't go up, your body uses that energy uses the energy, right, then you're not going to want to eat. So you're going to get full, you're going to get satiety, you're going to want to not eat and your body is not going to be storing it because it's using it, right? So yeah. that 100 calories, your body has two choices. You can use it or you can burn it. You, you can, sorry, you can right. burn it or you can store it, right? So which one it does makes a huge difference to how much body fat you store. So it's all about not the number of calories. It's about what the hormonal response to those calories is, which is completely and utterly different between two foods. Yes. So why would you say well, that sad. they're the same? Why are cookies the same as an egg? <laughs> who gets fat eating spinach or broccoli, right? But yeah. there's a lot of people who get fat eating cookies. So calories are not the same. So people say a calorie is a calorie. It's like, that's so stupid. I never mm -hmm. asked you if a calorie is a calorie. I'm asking you, are calories equally fattening? So the only implication is that certain foods are more fattening than other foods, right? Cookies are more fattening than broccoli. That's all I'm saying. Is that common sense? Yes. Yeah. In fact, your grandmother would have told you that if you think cookies are as fattening as broccoli, you're stupid. 